Welcome to Adventures in Security, Episode 9, The Updated Payment Card Standard. The new payment card industry data security standard was released this week. Version 3.2 adds important additional requirements for merchants and service providers. It also clarifies existing standards. Understanding these changes is important for adjusting existing policies, associated controls and processes, and service provider contracts. The primary account number, or PAN, is one of the data elements strongly protected by the PCI DSS. Version 3.1 did require masking of all unnecessary digits of the PAN when displayed on any media. Version 3.2 simply makes it clearer that under most circumstances, no media, paper or electronic, should display the entire PAN. When the PAN is absolutely needed by identified individuals for defined business processes, the entire PAN can be shown. Under other circumstances, paper or electronic media can display only the first six characters or the last four. When conducting self-assessments or seeking a third-party certification of compliance, every business accepting, processing, or storing payment card information must define the scope of the assessment. The scope includes all networks over which payment card information is transmitted and devices attached to those networks. PCI DSS 3.2 ensures backup and restore networks and cloud services are included in the assessment scope. The SSL retirement requirement is moved to Appendix A2. There are no significant changes here. SSL or early versions of TLS should not be used to encrypt payment card data. Further, SSL should be phased out as soon as possible due to inherent vulnerabilities in the protocol. Merchants and service providers cannot use SSL to protect payment card data after June 30th, 2018. The new requirements in PCI DSS 3.2 take effect as requirements in the first quarter of 2018. Until then, they're just suggested best practices. But don't wait until the last minute to implement. These are reasonable and appropriate controls that, in my opinion, should already be in place. Version 3.1 required multi-factor authentication, or MFA, for administrative access. It read, Incorporate two-factor authentication for remote network access originating from outside the network by personnel, including users and administrators, and all third parties, including vendor access for support or maintenance. This only required MFA when remote access was involved. But this changed in version 3.2, which reads, Incorporate multi-factor authentication for all non-console access into the CDE, or the cardholder data environment, for personnel with administrative access. MFA, as of 2018, will be required for authentication for all non-console access, or all non-console administrative access, into networks or systems where payment card information exists. A console is defined as the screen and keyboard of a server or a mainframe terminal, for example, dedicated to system management. Consequently, access from devices like desktops and laptops for administrative or support work require MFA. To be clear, MFA is required for either network or system authentication. The PCI DSS does not require MFA for both. Like any change, a change to the CDE must pass through a formal change management process. This should not be new to anyone. Failure to use change controls is one of the best ways to miss unwanted changes to security. Service providers provide payment processing or cloud services involving payment card data. A merchant is defined as a service provider if the services sold result in storing, processing, or transmitting cardholder data on behalf of other merchants or service providers. It's important for merchants to ensure service providers meet these standards in new or renegotiated contracts. According to PCI DSS 3.2, service providers must provide detailed documentation 
describing how authentication is used to protect payment card data. They must quickly detect and report failures in any security controls such as firewalls, IPS, IDS, physical and logical access controls, audit logging, and any other prevention, detection, or response control. They must engage executive management to establish responsibility for the protection of cardholder data and a PCI DSS compliance program. This should be a simple addition to the already existing security policy that sets up the overall security program. And they must perform at least quarterly reviews to confirm policy compliance with daily log reviews, firewall rule set reviews, configuration standards, security alert response, and change management. This update to the PCI DSS addresses emerging threats and successful attack characteristics. Nothing here involves new best practices for today. Although all new requirements are not required until 2018, this is far too long to wait to protect customer information. All of these standards should already be in place, or at least in the budget for short-term security projects. And that's it for this week. Join me next week as I explore change management, the one process that can continue to ensure system security requirements are still met, regardless of the changes applied. And visit my website, v-cso.com, to review the training and security management services offered to small and medium-sized businesses whose budgets don't allow their own security teams or managers. And be careful what you click.